Hello and welcome to part 2 of Projectile Motion. In this video, we are going to now focus on projectile motion at an angle. Let's take a look at what this might look like. The character Knuckles jumps on a spring and gets launched. The difference here compared to horizontal projectile motion is that Knuckles is launched at an angle in reference to the x-axis. For projectile motion at an angle, we still have to recognize the object's two different motions. The object has vertical motion and is traveling horizontally across. The initial velocity is pointed at an angle in reference to the x-axis. That means that the initial velocity plays a role in both the x and y direction. As the object travels across, the horizontal velocity vx stays constant as there is no acceleration in the x direction. Acceleration in the y direction is gravity and affects the y velocity. As it approaches the top of its path, it's slower and slower. The y velocity when it reaches the top of its path is zero because it stops before dropping. As it falls back down, the y velocity increases in the downward direction. Let's go to the kinematics and see how they get modified. Here are the one dimension kinematics in the y direction. Remember, the initial velocity points in both the x and y direction and to focus strictly on the y component, it's the initial velocity by sine of the angle. Acceleration in the y direction is still gravity, and this is how the kinematics get modified for the y direction. Moving on, these are the one dimension kinematics in the x direction. Again, the initial velocity points in both the x and y direction, and to focus strictly on the x component, it's the initial velocity by cosine of the angle. Remember, there is no acceleration in the x direction. Therefore, initial velocity in the x direction, vix, stays constant. If there is no acceleration, we only need one equation in the x direction. Let's move on to our first example. A person throws a ball at an angle of 60 degrees with initial velocity of 25 meters per second from a building 200 meters high. How far does it travel? We're looking for delta x, and this is the only kinematic to solve for it. Unfortunately, the time is not given in the problem to determine how far the ball travels. The kinematic for the y direction will have to be used to determine the time. There are other information that is given from this problem. The initial velocity and the angle is known, the height of the building is 200 meters, but the ball will ultimately end up 200 meters below where it started, hence y the negative for the delta y. Let's not forget about gravity either. With these known variables, this kinematic equation could help us solve for time. Let's plug in the known information and make the terms a little nicer. A little algebra reminder, though there are two delta t variables, the powers are different, which prevents us from combining them. I'm going to add 200 to both sides and rearrange some of the terms. And hopefully this may have sparked a familiar math concept, the quadratic equation. The quadratic equation will be needed to qu calculate the time. We know a, b, and c. So let's go forward and use the quadratic equation to solve for the time. At the end, there will be two answers for time, 8.96 seconds and negative 4.55 seconds. But only one of these makes sense as time cannot be negative. Therefore, the ball spends 8.96 seconds traveling in the air. With a new calculated time, we can finally solve for how far the ball travels. Delta x equals 25 cosine of 60 times 8.96. Our final answer is positive 112 meters. There are a few last notes I want to mention. When dealing with projectile motion at an angle, sometimes you may need to use more than one kinematic. If you're trying to calculate the maximum height, remember the y velocity at the top is 0 meters per second as it has to stop before falling back down. Lastly, there is a frequently asked question, why isn't the final velocity 0 when it hits the ground? While you can certainly say that the object no longer moves when it hits the ground, it is also no longer considered a projectile. If it's not a projectile, these particular kinematics will not work. 
This concludes our video on projectile motion part 2. Hope you found it helpful.